issues of this world. And therefore, we need the strength of God to be able to handle that which goes on around us. And for the last several Sundays, I've been preaching about the importance of us understanding the fault line on which we dwell. Meaning that it is very important that as children of God, that the church open its mouth about the cultural issues that are before us. I'm going to say that one more time. The church has to open its mouth about the cultural issues that are before us. And the church, the church, part of the reason why things are the way they are is because the church has been too silent for too long. There's anybody who knows that it's important to have a message of unity and a message of working together, a message of loving one another. I don't know about you, but I think it ought to be the church. Even if the world doesn't necessarily agree with it, I think it ought to be the church. And I just want you to know that I am certainly determined in the work that God has given me to do my part, along with making sure that I'm talking with my peers about the fact that we can't depend on the world to try to tell our message. Do I have a witness here? Oh no, we can't, we can't depend on the world to talk about love. We can't depend on the world to talk about uh, the importance of forgiveness and unity and working together and listening to one another. We can't expect Facebook to do that for us. Come on, somebody. We know very well that the Lord has already given us He's given us all of our marching orders from Genesis to Revelation. And I don't know about you, I think it's mighty good in times like these for us to open our mouth and let somebody know that the words of Jesus are real. Do I have a witness here? And that it is very important that we are doing our part to make sure that this world that we live in is more tolerable. I'm just going to say amen myself. In John 14, I started this conversation with you on last Sunday. In John 14, uh, the uh, verses 15 to 17, and I certainly want to make uh, those uh, make welcome those who are watching uh, on Facebook, those who will see this on uh, YouTube or at our church website, or those that are listening in. I want you to know that even though we can't see you, you are our brothers and sisters. Whether you believe the same way we do or not, you still, my brother or sister, do I have a witness here? I had to say to someone the other day, and I'm sure you've had this uh, wonderful opportunity as well, somebody whose political views may be different than your own, and after they got finished because they had already decided who I was and what I stand for, I said, I just thank you for telling me all that because you're still my brother, and I need you to understand you're still going to be my brother or you're going to be my sister nonetheless. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. People don't know what to do with that stuff when you say that. So go on and say it. I'm just, I'm giving you that for free this morning. Go on and say it. They don't know what to do with it. God knows what to do with it. That's really what it's all about. The word says in John 14, 15 to 17 in the New International Version, he says, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. And be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. And uh, I want to talk about divine promise. This is part two of this uh, passage of scripture. God, we come. Thanking you for another week. Thank you for seven months that we have gone through this year already. Amazing that today is yet the start of another month. And Lord, at the same time, we thank you for still being you. No matter how much the world changes, no matter what changes around us, Lord, we are grateful that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for walking with us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for dealing with our tripped up self sometimes. And Lord, we thank you for giving us another chance. We stand this morning in this sanctuary, but yet we speak across the world to let people know that no matter what others are going to do, we're going to serve the Lord. John
Joshua said, well, choose this day whom ye will serve, whether it's the God of the other side of the floods or the God of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, hallelujah, we will serve the Lord. And we come every Sunday, Lord, in the same spirit. We're going to serve you. We're going to praise you. We're going to walk with you. We're going to talk with you. We're going to hang with you because we know, Lord, that you have the words to eternal life. We are grateful to you now. Be with us in this wonderful celebration today. We pray that in all that we do, that we give glory and that we give honor to you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give God our best praise. Let's give God some really good praise. Worthy to be praised. You may be seated. I am so grateful. You know, I remember a time where I wasn't as um, versatile when it came to music. I only wanted to hear one kind of gospel music. You understand. I grew up where they didn't dance, they didn't clap and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden they began to see and do things a little differently. If you wonder why it is that we have the variety of music that we have or that we uh, certainly celebrate people dancing to the word of God, you just need to look at Psalm 150. I'm not going to read it for you today, but I know that there's a part in there that says praise him. Do I have a witness here? Praise him with timbrel, praise him with dance. Let everything that has breath, our Lord Jesus, I know. I know I've got a Bible student here somewhere to know that the word of God makes it clear to praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. My friends, this morning as we talk about the this text, let us remember that not only do we have a responsibility as a church, we have a responsibility as an individual who's part of a church that when you go out into the world, you represent the church. More importantly, you represent Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness here this morning? And when I talk about the fact that we are in the midst of one of the most amazing social revolutions that this country has ever seen, the fact is we are right in the midst of it. But I want to be clear, we must still be centered in Christ. Do I have a witness? Not only are we centered in Christ, we believe in his word, and we use his word to make sure that it centers us. Do I have a witness here today? <laughs> Jesus talking with the disciples, and by extension talking to us, he says something extremely important right in the first part of this passage today, as he says, if you love me. And by the way, that's a very, very important clause because it's important that if you can get through that clause, then you can do the rest. But you see, if you're tripped up by the question or the statement that says, if you love me, then you're pretty messed up. Because I came to tell you that it's important to love him who is willing to walk with us and stand with us and love us before we ever knew him. Do I have a witness here today? And the word tells us that if you love him, then you'll keep my commands. And I recognize that sometimes it's really hard because we've got modern-day Pharisees. What do I mean by that, preacher? Well, what I mean is that the Pharisees tested Jesus and said, how is it that you, what is the most important command that we have? And he said, the most important command that you have is that you love, come on somebody, a amen, and that you love your neighbor as, I, I know I've got a Bible student here somewhere, right? And the text today reminds us that it is important that we understand that our neighbor is not just the person next door, but is possibly the person that is on the street, the person that's down the block, the person that you don't know, the person that doesn't even look like us, the person who will never come to church, the person that is really messed up today. That is our neighbor. And he says that you must love them as we love ourselves. Now, now by the way, I'm not going to get into a psychological conversation with you this morning because we know that part of the problem that we have in today's society, and quite frankly have had all through human history, is that often we really don't love ourselves. 
And often our behavior is what causes us to act the way we act. Now, y'all don't want to hear that because that, that's not amen territory. I got news for you. It is amen territory because it is the truth. And it, and, and it shows up in very ugly ways. And it shows up in very dysfunctional ways. But here's the point. What he's trying to say is I want you to quit thinking about yourself and I want you to remember that I made the biggest sacrifice that could ever be made for you. And when I made that sacrifice, I made it because I love you. And by the way, if you don't think you can love your neighbor, you don't think you can love yourself, just focus on loving me because if you love me, I promise you, you will get to loving yourself. Oh, Jesus, I'm going somewhere with this. The text reminds us that he said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And I know for every one of us, there's somebody when we were growing up and perhaps somebody now that it mattered that you got their approval. It mattered that they said, well done. It mattered because you would do what you wouldn't normally do, but you knew that it would make big mama happy. Do I have a witness here today, right? You knew that your teacher, your pastor, your good friend, whatever it was, and all I can say is that it's also important that we think about the fact that when we do right, when we do well, when we do beyond ourselves, we ought to be happy about the fact that it made God happy. Do I have a witness here today? He said, if you love me, keep my commands. And where the fault line occurs today is that underneath all of that, there's all kind of stuff going on. I explained a few weeks ago what the fault line is all about and what, how it literally creates slippage underneath the foundation. But I come today to tell you that what we must understand is that fault line exists partly to remind us where we stand. Let, let me, let me, I knew y'all wouldn't get that. I knew there was somebody who was gonna say, I, I don't know what you're talking about now. Let, let me be clear, many times, the resistance that you get in this world, many times the stuff that you hear, the behavior that goes on around you, it shows up because of the fault line, but it also shows up to remind you, would you do that if you were in your best Christ self? Come on now, somebody. If you were in your best Christ self. And see, that's the issue. That's the acid test for many of us, is to remember that we don't always show up in our best self. Do I have a witness here? We, we don't always show up in our best self. We, we may show up on Sunday that way, but on Monday, we might not always, come on now somebody, we might not always show up as our best self. But the goal here is to remember that this book isn't just for Sunday morning. The sermon is not just for Sunday morning. That all of this is to guide us as literally uh, a wind beneath your wings all week long. Do I have a witness here? That's what it's all about. And the more you practice this, the better you get at it. And I know very well that all of us are on this journey together. Do I have a witness? That we want to be better tomorrow than we were today. The text tells us that it's very important that we understand that from a fault line standpoint, the world doesn't know who he is, and more importantly, the world doesn't want to know who the Holy Spirit is. The world doesn't want to try to do things the way that they would be focused on the protocols of who God's Holy Spirit is. But I came to tell you that as a child of God, you don't have an opportunity to put that on the shelf because you see, he made it clear that the Holy Spirit is not just around you, the Holy Spirit is within us. What does that mean, preacher? What does that mean? That means that there is something you can call on. I, I see it happen. I know some of y'all like the Ty Tyler Perry series. Don't, don't act like y'all don't know who Medea is or anything like that. I'm not talking about all of the series. I, I want to go to talk about Medea for a minute. Every now and then, you can see yourself in Medea, can't you? Hallelujah, somebody. You don't have to say amen. I know it's true anyhow. Otherwise, as, he, as uh, Bishop Tyson said this past week, just go on to say amen when you get ready. Just, just recognize that there is a Medea within us. And watch some of the episodes. What you'll see is that when people really push Medea 
Leah to the limit, she'll say, she'll begin to mutter and talk out loud, knowing very well that she needs to get strength not to do what she wants to do. And for those of you who don't know who Medea is, when she gets really upset, she'll get the fire frying pan out. Amen, I'll leave it that way. The point being made is that every one of us has the Holy Spirit within us, which is the very reason why it's important for us not to talk about what we can't do when it comes to our temperament that we can't do when it comes to reconciliation, that we can't do when it comes to tolerating somebody else's attitude. Because the fact is, oftentimes we forget how much it takes for people to tolerate ours. Do I have a witness here uh, this morning? The world can't accept it, and there are lots of reasons why the world can't accept it, but the fact is, don't get stuck on the world not accepting him, Get stuck on the fact that you can and I can accept that Christ is my Savior. Christ is your Savior. Christ is your hope. Christ is our help. Christ is our work. Christ is our way of getting up because he gives us a way out of no way. The world may not be able to handle it, but I know that you and I can. I know that when we look back on how great God has been to us, sometimes we can just say hallelujah. The world may not know what hallelujah means, but you know what hallelujah means because you know how far he has brought you. I know how far he has brought me. Do I have a witness? No, the world can't accept him, and I came to tell you this morning, don't wait on the world to accept him. But, but I am saying that until the world does, and if the world does, don't worry about that. Just make sure that you and I are working the way we need to work to be able to show the world what the example is all about. Do I have a witness here today? That as we look at this world and we see the dis the disintegration of relationship, that we see that there is way too much focus on self, that we see that there is too much focus on lies and greed and all of those things, that should cause every one of us as children of God to redouble our effort to say, Lord, what do I need to do to be better at being a child of God than I have been up to this point? My friends, some of what we see going on in the world is ugly to watch. Do, do I have a witness here? Some of it is ugly to watch. I said something last week about our voting situation, and I heard this past week about the fact that there are those who are in these various state houses. Not only are they trying to make it harder for people to vote, they are trying to preserve for themselves that if they don't like the way the vote turned out, that they have the power to overturn the vote of the people. I'm telling you right now, the church cannot be silenced. In situations like this, we must remember that the will and the vote of the people is absolutely foundational to the democracy that we say that we live in. And we cannot be silenced when those those pillars of democracy cause us to understand that our children, who aren't old enough to understand right now, I don't want them to live in the system that many of us have been. I don't want them to have to hear, you've got to work harder, you've got to work longer. I want them to know they are 100% accepted as a child of God and a citizen of this nation. We cannot, I don't want us to marginalize our kids' thoughts about how high they can go. We had that going on when we were growing up. Baby, no, you know, you can't do that because you don't have all the credentials to get that done. And yet you'll see other people that don't have as much credentials as you do. And yet they got promoted. I, I know I've got, I know I've got a witness somewhere. The world can't accept him because the world cannot see him or know him. But here's what he's saying to us. We, he's making a promise to us. He said, look, I'm leaving, but I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. I, I'm leaving, but I'm giving you the comforter. I'm leaving, but I'm giving you the advocate. I'm leaving, but I'm going to make sure that you will be brought to memory for everything that I have taught you. I'm leaving, but I'm never going to leave you comfortless. Do I have a witness here? And that means that when he makes that promise, that means 
that he's left something else, and that is he's left you and I to be the example. Be the example in your neighborhood. Be the example on your job. Be the example when you go to the grocery store. Be the example when it comes to anything that you have the opportunity to do. He gave us the ability to have the Holy Spirit in us, and somebody ought to know that if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've got the Father, you've got the Son, you've got the Holy Spirit. Very important that you know that. Which means, which means that when things get rough and you feel like giving up, you need to quit worrying about your flesh and remember that your spirit is still strong. Do I have a witness here? That your spirit is one that's moving you and pushing you along and helps you to be able to come out with a better thing coming out of our mouth than what our flesh would. Do I have a witness here? Because sometimes I know what our flesh will push out of our mouth. A amen belongs right there. And sometimes, whether it's somebody we're talking to or whether it's us ourselves, we need to ask the question out loud, is that you or is that your flesh? Y'all don't hear me. Is that you or is that your flesh? Because I'm willing to wait to give you a do-over to allow the, the Spirit to speak through you. Because when the Spirit speaks through, there's no worry about the fault line that lies beneath. I came to tell you that listening to and waiting for and literally making sure that you're focusing on the Spirit and not our flesh is what helps us. And if you need a reference, go to Ephesians 4.15, which tells us to speak your truth in love, which means that we do that knowing full well that it hurts sometimes. You know, I've got somebody uh, like Elder Hennessy, and for others of you do the same, and that is that there are times that they don't really like what I have to say behind the pulpit. But I came to tell you, you may not like it, but I promise you it's still right. Do I have a witness here? And I know it's not easy. Do I have a witness here? I recognize that the word of God, sometimes it's hard to follow. Sometimes you know good and well, you just want to get things straight. Do I have a witness? You know very well that they've been messing with you and all that kind of stuff. And you know very well you got your chance to get even. But I came to tell you that God still settles the score way better than you and I ever do. And if you haven't seen it yet, go back to 1 Samuel and watch what David does. And David has an opportunity to get rid of Saul, but he doesn't do it. He has the opportunity to, but he doesn't do it because he relies on God. And I come to tell you that as I get ready to close, to remind you, number one, that God, if you love him, you'll keep his commands. Let me pause for a minute for somebody. Because I know that there are people who say church is too hard. Loving God is too hard. I came to tell you, it's harder to love people than it is to love God. That's a clinic for another day. Hallelujah, somebody. Right? The second thing I want to remind you is that he gives you a promise that will literally keep you through life and keep you through eternity. And what's important about his promises is they are, number one, they are real, and he does not pull back on his promise. Number three, it's important that you have a boldness when you come to your relationship with Jesus Christ that you can say exactly what Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15, when he did say, as I said during the prayer, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I recognize there's a lot of this other conspiracy jump going on out there, but that doesn't define, and that is not the narrative for my house. I know that there's a lot of people who are deciding to hate on other people. I want to be clear, that is not our narrative. That's somebody else's stuff. And I recognize even in the name of Christianity, we've got people that are going out there dividing folks. That is not our narrative. That is not who we are. We do not serve a God who does anything other than try to bring us together. And I take you to Psalm 133 to remind you. I came to tell you that I our God is a great God. Our God is a good God. Our God loves us. We love our God. We're going to stand with him. We're going to stand against this world. We're going to stand against division. We're going to stand against prejudice. We're going to stand against hate. We're going to stand against anything that divides the house of God. We are his children. Not only are we going to make good on, he makes good on his promise.
around us, but it's important that we make good on ours. Do I have a witness here today? And so I beg you that as we go back out into the world, yeah, it gets weary and it gets tough, and yes, the fault lines sometimes are hard to manage, but I want to remind you that you only have you to worry about. Come on, somebody. You're the president and CEO of your spiritual journey, and I want you to know that the God you serve has equipped you to be able to do everything that you need to do and to deal with everything that comes before you. And guess what? Let me let you in on a secret, and with this I'm done. You're not fighting all those wars by yourself. You're not fighting every issue that comes before you by yourself. I want you to know that you've got an advocate who is always there and always fighting, no matter how much it hurts. I want to be clear, we don't get the blunt of the hurt, not fully, because we have a God who's standing right by our side, which is exactly what the vocalist was singing about. You raised me up. And when you raise me up, I can, I, can, I, can, I can sing, I can handle, I can speak, I can go to the highest mountain knowing that I've got you on my side. I don't know what it would be in a life or a world without God. And I am so grateful, and I pray that you are, that you don't have to worry about him either. He will not leave you. Do I have a witness here? He will not forsake you. He will walk with you all the time. That's his promise. Lord Jesus, somebody get up. Somebody just get up and give God some praise.